Hey everyone, Kaylee here with this beautiful finger waves updo. A lot of you were requesting hairstyles from the 1920s for things like Downton Abbey or flapper costumes and I wanted to show you how I did this. It's beautiful, it's a little technical, but I just love this updo and I think you will too. So let's get started. We're gonna start by hiding half the hair so that you don't have to finger wave all of your hair. And the way we're gonna do that is first by making a side part and then you're going to make kind of a circle around your part. About three inches out, just make a circle around it and then clip that hair up. We're gonna use that for finger waving later. But the rest of the hair, we're just going to put into pigtails. And that way we can have it completely out of the way, you don't have to deal with it, and this will eventually become the bun at the end of the hairstyle. So it makes it a lot easier than it could have been. And then I'm just gonna put some quick little curls into the hair. This way, the hair all kind of flows together at the end of the hairstyle because everything else is gonna be curled. You don't wanna leave these straight. But I'm just gonna pop in some really quick curls. These don't have to be perfect or anything. Just get them a little bit wavy or curly and you're good to go. And now let's talk about setting the curls because this is the most important part of the whole hairstyle. I'm going to be using my Numi Octawands and it has eight interchangeable attachments, but I'm going to use the 13 millimeter attachment. This is actually the size that they used in the 1920s, so it's super accurate, but it also makes beautiful, tight, consistent curls, which is perfect for finger waving. If you wanna go a little bit looser, you could also use the three quarter inch attachment. This was used closer to the 1930s for a looser finger wave. So if you want something that looks a little bit more modern, you could use the three quarter inch attachment. And now that you've picked your barrel, you can go ahead and let your hair down. And we're gonna start by curling the top half of the hair that we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and separate that around my part. And because we're curling the top half, I'm going to actually clip the bottom half so that it doesn't get in the way. Because you know, hair likes to kind of like hang on and get in the way when you really don't want it to. So using these little clips is gonna make everything a lot cleaner. Then I'm going to use the Paul Mitchell Hot Off The Press Spray for some extra hold and heat protection. And now we can start curling. So I'm going to take a small section of hair about the width of my finger and take a good look at this section because you want every single section after it to look exactly the same. Then pull the hair straight up and grab your iron. We're going to curl counterclockwise, which is toward our face on this side, my left side of the part. And you're gonna wrap the hair around, keeping it flat on the barrel the entire time. Then once the hair is thoroughly heated up, you can go ahead and take the iron out and we're going to scrunch the curl up and pin it in place to cool. You wanna get that extra little bit of set because we're gonna be brushing these curls a lot. And now you're gonna do the same thing over and over and over again. You want to make these curls identical because the more alike these curls are, the better wave you get and the more consistent wave you get. So you need to take the same size sections every time and you need to curl it the same way every time. This iron is a really good pick for this hairstyle because it has consistent and steady heat so you know that you're getting the exact amount of heat on every single curl, which again makes it even more uniform. Now that we're to the back of the part, I want you to pretend like it's sunbeams radiating from the sun, so you're just gonna kind of radiate around the back of the part as you work on the back of your hair. And then you'll find yourself on the other side of your part. Now we're still curling counterclockwise, and on the first side of your part, that meant that you were curling toward your face, but now you're gonna be curling away from your face because you're curling the exact same way all the way around. Now if that sounds super confusing and I totally just lost you, don't worry. Just curl one side of your part going toward your face and one side going away from your face. That's all you need to know, just do that. So I'm gonna keep curling until all the hair from this top section is done and pinned up. And now you're gonna do the exact same thing on the second half of your hair. So you're gonna add in your heat protectant and then curl counterclockwise, pinning it up all the way around. Again, you wanna make this the exact same kind of curl that you already did. It might seem like a lot, but we're really only curling the top section of your hair, and this is the most important part of the hairstyle, so it's worth taking the time on. So now that everything is pinned up, you gotta let it cool. That is very important. If you don't let it cool, all the work you put into this point, not worth it. So once everything is totally cool, then you can take all the bobby pins out and let these curls down, and you can see we have some curls. I mean, if you wanted to know how to do Shirley Temple curls, there you go. And now we're ready to move on to making the first wave. Now the first thing you need to do is break up these curls. So use your fingers to go through them and break them up a little bit. You might notice they kind of poof up a little bit. That's totally normal. You're gonna use your hairbrush to kind of brush through and smooth everything back down. Now it's time to start shaping the curl. So because the curl went away from your face, you're going to brush away from your face. And you can see that that wave shows right up. 
and that comes from having a really good set. So I'm gonna brush all that out and get it nice and smooth, but then I'm gonna take a comb and just direct it a little bit more just to get it perfect, and then I'm going to use some little pin curl clips to hold all of that in place. You can use any kind of clip you have that is flat, and that will hold it in place so that we can keep doing the rest of the waves without disturbing it. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just breaking it up and brushing it through, but on this side we curled toward the face, so you're going to brush the hair toward the face until you see the wave pop up. I used my comb to brush the hair forward, and then you can see this little wave kind of starting right around my finger, and I just went ahead and clips to keep that in place. I actually ended up moving the clips to be underneath my finger later. Anyway, for the back, all you have to do is brush your hair straight back and let whatever wave happen, happen. That way you don't have to stress about it too much, but if you do see a nice wave popping up as you brush through, just go ahead and push up and add some clips in. Again, if you don't see it too much, like don't stress about the back. Just brush it and let the waves be what they are because the back doesn't matter that much. Then I realized that I needed to pin the bottom of the wave on the front, so I just combed everything to make sure that it was nice and smooth. You can see that I kind of pinned the top of the wave, but I didn't pin the bottom. So once everything was nice and smooth, I went ahead and pushed up and then I pinned everything in place to keep it there. And that's it for our first wave. And we're only making two, so you are doing great. You're halfway there. And now we're on to that second wave. So I'm gonna go back to that first side of our hair and we're gonna brush away from the face again. And I'm basically just gonna go through and just kind of finesse this so that it's a little bit more polished. But as I brush through, you're gonna see that wave pop up. And that's really the key to making this as easy as possible is letting the hair show you where the wave is. So just brush until you see the wave and then clip the hair in place there. If you don't see it simply by brushing, try brushing the hair down and then pushing up. That will usually show you where the wave is. And then just hold your comb or brush in place and pin underneath it. And that should help you be able to find the wave a lot more quickly and easily. This side is a good example of that. I was having a hard time finding the wave, so what I did was just to brush my comb through until I pushed up and then I could find the wave really easily because it was right there over my comb. So I put the comb against my head and clipped everything in place underneath the comb. But then once I let it away, I actually had this funny bubbling effect. If you get a bubbling effect like that, all you have to do is push in on it and you can see that there's that nice little wave that forms right when I did that. That happened just because I missed one of the waves that I should have clipped before, but this was a nice easy way of finding it without stressing me out. And that's actually it for the second wave, so now I'm going to make the knots in the back. The first thing that we have to do is to kind of smooth out everything that we have left after we made the waves. It might look a little hairy and out of place, but once you go through it with your brush, everything should smooth nicely. If you need, you can add a little bit of smoothing serum into your ends just to help with that. And then what we're gonna do is sweep this hair back and over the pigtail on the side that we're working on. Then just go ahead and pin it in place right there so that it's all ready to go into our little knots. So we are literally gonna tie a knot with our hair. So I'm going to loop it around my hand so that it makes a little donut shape. And then I'm just going to pull the end through that loop. So like your standard basic knot. This was actually a really popular thing to do in the 1920s and you can really see it when you look back at their hairstyles. So then you're just gonna take this knot and you're gonna place it right on top of the holder from your pigtail and then you're just gonna pin it in place. And once you're done with that, we're ready to move on to the second side. On this side, you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're just going to smooth everything with your brush, sweep it over your pigtail and then pin it in place. Then you're going to make a knot the same way as before and you're just going to loop it around and pull the ends through that loop. If your ends are extra long like mine are, you can actually kind of tuck them around behind the knot, that way they're not gonna show up. And then you just have to kind of push this one up really close to the first one so it looks like it's all one big bun or chignon and pin it in place. Once that is done, you have finished. And I was really excited about that. I'm gonna add in some Stronghold hairspray to make sure everything stays. And I'm also gonna add in a little bit of shine spray just to enhance the shine and the hairstyle. Once you've got all that in, you can go ahead and carefully start taking the clips out, and this will be the last step in our hairstyle. Ugh, this hairstyle just takes me back. It makes me so happy because it really does imbibe the 1920s and the glamour and the style of the era. It makes me so, so happy, and I hope you guys like it too. If you're interested in the iron I used today, you can use code Let's Make It Up to get it for $128 plus a free serum. Or you can use code Love Kaylee to get any one for $39 plus free shipping. I hope that you guys love this hairstyle. Send me pictures if you try it out, and I'll see you in my next video. Mwah!
拜。